we're just um, welcome Sister Andy, Reverend Andy, to our Bible study. And uh, you um, can mute if you have, unmute if you have comments or type in the um, chat. Um, and we are ready to go with Reverend Andy. We'll open up with prayer and turn it over to you. All Reverend. right. Father, right now we come before you, God. We thank you in everything, Father. We bless your name right now. Even those who are on the mission field, Father, we ask that you protect and keep them. Father, as we take and study tonight about being a servant, Father, I pray that we come together and be able to get a clear understanding of our role as a servant, Father God, and the role that we're called to perform in the ministries we serve. We thank you and we praise you, God. And I ask now that you guide this Bible study in the way you would have it to go for. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. This is a talk back. We work together. We get through this Bible study tonight. Um, I'm not going to do all the talking, but I just believe if we work together, we will be able to get through it. The theme tonight we're going to deal with is being a servant, who is a servant. Uh, Matthew 23 and 11 say, the greatest among you shall be your servant. The greatest among you shall be your servant. Um, I just wanted to come on tonight and I got this theme entirely even Sunday while I was at Jerusalem and talking with one of the gentlemen there and we talked about being a servant. And I was like, ooh, that's gonna work for Wednesday, for Wednesday night. And so that has stuck with me all week about being a servant and our role as a servant unto God, not unto man, but unto God. And when we are servant, we would do the duties that God have called us to do. My, now I want to know, what is your intake on being a servant? Come on now, we're going to do this together. Come on off of mute. I'm only seeing one person. Yeah. The rest of us have to speak up since we didn't show our face. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll try to do as much. I'm in my car. Um, servant was once explained to me, and it kind of made so much sense because as deacons, we serve uh, doing whatever it takes. And, and yes. that's not in a negative way. As it relates to God, we do some things that sometimes where uh, we're not, we're definitely not looking for something in return. We're looking to serve others. You said we're looking to serve others or we're not looking? Hello? Can, can you hear me? Brother Leon, you're on mute. There we go. <laughs> Look at her others. Can, can you repeat that? Can you hear me, Sister Regina? Yes, you, you're good now. Okay. All right. I was dealing with some issues with my computer as well. So what did you say? If you could just say that for me again, I apologize. I was trying to hear and the speakers weren't up. Oh, we're looking to serve others. We're not looking for something in return. Amen, amen. But do sometimes you feel like in serving others, others have taken advantage of your service? There have been times, um, I think, some people live that way, uh, and some may not even realize it, um, but it doesn't stop me from serving because I know um, I believe God's going to get the glory in any way, uh, and he'll deal with those types of situations when they come up. Not, I don't think it's up to me to take care of or, or kick somebody to the curb. Amen. Amen. Is there anyone else that wants to uh, talk about serving and being a servant, and what does it mean to be a servant? This is um, Sister Regina. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Pastor C. I mean, excuse me, uh, Reverend Lewis. Good, Good to evening. see you again. Yes. Um, did you sing your way into this? I wasn't here in the beginning. 
No, I didn't sing my way. I was simply <laughs> trying to get this servant together. I know that's right. I agree with um, Deacon Leon. And um, as, as uh, and being a servant, um, well, it, for me, is 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 serving without um, you suffer with Christ. You know, you're gonna as as a servant, you, you accept the fact that you're gonna um, encounter some issues and um, situations that are not very comfortable, and uh, but we stand firm and 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 still walk in the light and do uh, what you know that that I know it sounds cliche, but it's very powerful statement still is the question is asked is what would Jesus do? Yes. And as a servant, we must do the same. And in light, in spite of, and in light of. Do you feel sometimes that some roles people are serving in are really not the role they should be in? Amen. <laughs> I mean, but again, I, 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 well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's my Come on, keep Yeah. Elaborate. We about to we about to heal the church and make it whole. Yeah, I I I I uh, appreciate uh, um, those who volunteer to fill a position in the church. Mm -hmm. Um, and and um, but once they're in it in that position, uh, their action sometimes does not match up with. Uh, what what I know as being a servant should be. Okay. But um, I pray for that person because the fact is they did step up. They did accept the, the challenge of the business, the, um, the uh, duty, you know, but um, I guess that comes in to praying for individuals. Okay. You know, so, yeah. <laughs> um. In John 12, 12, 26, it said, Jesus said, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. <laughs> you know what? Even as we elaborate on servant, servanthood, being a servant, there sometimes I feel we may be placed in positions, as you indicated earlier, we step up for the role or we think it's something we can perform. Um, but at times we lose our passion. Mm -hmm. And I believe when we start losing our passion for something, um, no one should have to tell you right. that you have lost your passion. Amen. There should be some times when we ought to be able to say, oh, you know, little brother, sister, um, what you are expressing is, is like a hindrance to the building, to the church, to the ministry. Yeah, yeah. So being a servant, although we say what the scriptures say, we say what the Bible say, but we have known situations where some people have left church because of how they were treated or how uh, they were perceived or or what was said to them. So we got to be ever so careful that every time we encounter people, sometimes you just have to count or breathe before you react. And if we're going to follow what the father does and follow the will of the father and being a servant, we, we have to, um, I feel, I'm not going to say set people straight. I'm going to say we have to say, hold up, wait a minute. We, let, let us pray. Let us come on one accord. Let us agree. I don't know if that person going to like it, but there's been too much church hurt. Um, we've been beat up on at work, school, and everything. And then we come to church and feel the same. Mm -hmm. I, I want to be able to be the, be the servant that I have sense enough to know if I'm a hindrance to you, I'm going to go ahead and sit down. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, we 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 know what what Jesus do, but at the same time, we're not always walking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. So I have to say, now, Andrew, you're gonna have to pump your brakes because you're getting ready to come out to the left. Mm -hmm. So I have to say, it sometimes, wait a minute, let me think because if I speak, it's coming out wrong. So so we have to know the role we're in, and if it's time to stay in that role or 
allow someone else that's more spiritual to walk in that role. <laughs> yeah, I know we at church every Sunday. You know what we encounter every Sunday. Mm -hmm. But no one wants to say, come, let's sit down and let's discuss this. Even when Jesus had uh, picked his disciples, he chose carefully the 12 that he selected to walk alongside. So that's something we should do even in ministry in selecting people for certain positions. I don't know how you feel about it, but come on, who, who come on, somebody help me out. Um, I would say Webster say um, the servant is one who performs duties for another person, a personal employer. But that would serve in our jobs, our career path. But when we are serving in the house of the Lord in ministries, how should we serve in those ministries? John 13, 16 said, truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. So we have to be careful in our roles as servants. Anyone wants to add to it? We'll take it. If you're audio, we'll take that too. Who wants to add to the role of a servant and what you're called to do in a servant in your position? Do you feel as a servant in whatever role you're playing in your church, do you feel you're, you're serving to the best of your ability? Do you feel sometimes you're like burnt out? Mm. You know, sister, um, sister, one else to say anything, I uh, uh, just will add, um, sometimes it, it, we sometimes we're uh, serve in the position mm -hmm. because no one else is. Mm -hmm. And I think it, the, the, the position sometimes is better left vacant mm -hmm. until someone is there that's going to actually um, not do damage. Um, okay. You know, we got to feed our spirit. We must be fed. Yes. I, you, you talked about Jesus and, and the 12 disciples. Even the 12 disciples were at odds, but they still remain, um, you know, they, they, they have a, the, the commonality of, you know, of service to Christ. They had different ideas of what should be done. And, um, and they did have conflict with one another. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, they ended on one accord from what I read, what I, from what the scripture teaches us. Right. Um, you know, even though you had all those different examples of the different uh, personalities of the disciples. And I think once we grasp um, the reality that we are human and we have these differences, and even after we uh, go at each other sometimes mm -hmm. um, that we would remember Christ and, and come back to each other, you know, because we're, we're, we're doing a, um, the work of the Lord and it's not easy, it's, you know, uh, but it's not easy. Amen. Amen. Is there another? It's Brenda, and I think of being a servant is being having humility, and humility. What did they say? Pride comes before fall. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we get into position, especially in the African American church. We own that position, and we feel like Amen. nobody else can do it like we do it. We feel like, um, I think about self-control, having self-control, because you have to have openness to deal with others. You can't be closed-minded. Um, you have to open your heart and pray to God to give you the right answer to deal with another human being. Because in the African-American church, always, those positions had a hierarchy. And sometimes we take that hierarchy and we uh, take it to the next level. 
like you're under me and I'm under you. But you think about Peter. Remember all of the things that Peter did before, um, you know, he that denied Christ. You think about um, some of the other disciples, um, like um, Nathaniel was, is that the one that said, can any good thing come out of Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. And um, you, you think about all the things that the disciples go through, went through, they were not perfect, mm -hmm. but they was working be sanctified. That's right. You know, and that's a daily thing that we have to ask God to um, daily watch over our souls mm -hmm. so we can have self control. We can be humble. Amen. I see in here. Um... Someone has written, let's reason together. We must examine ourselves frequently, love one another. The Bible said the greatest commandment is that you love one another, love God. And um, Brenda had hit on something, and I'm trying to think. I was writing down some of the stuff you did say. Humility, pride come before fall. And um, another young lady spoke about leaving a position open until there is someone to fill that position. Um, I'm going to tell you what I, I, I feel sometimes. I feel sometimes we create a lot of man-made positions, I would say, or things in church. And then afterwards, that's the same thing that calls us to burn out or calls us not to like the ministry. As psalmist, I don't think we were called to be a professional singer. But we were called to, because we enjoy it, we like music. So we wanted to make sure God's presence was being revealed through song, through, through the ministry of ushers. Um, so, some positions, I just think, um, I had this conversation with a young lady not long ago. And we talked about like ushering and some of the people didn't want to usher. I said, well, then let everyone sit down and just let people come into the church because if you loving them coming in the doors or somebody then why you have to stand right there if it's causing discontent in the building so what we thinking is a great thing is causing some discontent then everybody sit down <laughs> when the people come into the church you turn around and love them or welcome and you know through your voice or something but if this is going to cause havoc in the ministry, should we continue? Should we have it? Or, I mean, like really causing havoc. How do you feel about that? Um, I know we quote the scripture, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. But that was that mainly for ushers? Just something to think about. I know the Bible speaks on calling pastors and preachers, but if a certain position is going to cause havoc, make a joyful noise, it didn't say you had to have one choir to do that. If, if the choir is going to cause discontent, then let's do the congregation from the floor. I'm just asking questions and just throwing these out as questions and things to think about. Yeah, this is Deacon Harris again. I think sometimes you, you find that in the church, people that may be qualified to do certain things may not have uh, the growth to, 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 to be in that ministry. And if you stick a person in a ministry or you're placing them in a ministry, uh, you need to work with them in the ministry. Uh, a lot of times you'll see where we're so happy to have people a part of the church that you'll bring people in and you automatically want to get them working. But, you know, there's other other methods of getting that person prepared for that position. And it will vary person to person. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think versus a person being in a position they don't want to be in, uh, they're not going to do a good job. That's no different than in the workplace. But in the Church of God, if you got somebody standing at the door that ain't happy to be there, that's going to affect everybody coming through that door, especially that person that has a 
spirit where I'm, I'm, I'm questioning whether I want to be a part of the church. And that day they decide to step through the door and they see a person that ain't happy to be there. Guess what? That's going to rub off on that person. I think we, we all have to, like the sister said earlier, constantly examine ourselves, mm -hmm. but at the same time, be on the look around to how you can help somebody else. And it may, you may not be able to help everybody. I know sometimes we want to run to the first person and, and try to give our help to them, but we may not be the person that God is calling us to help that person. Um, but, you know, it, it happens in the church uh, and it is, is probably meant well. Sometimes it just doesn't end well. You, uh, you said a magic word, um, training them in that position. I um, talked with the pastor once and he said they were doing leadership classes and training. He said, because first what you do is train people. And then if they are not fulfilling that task, move them or whatever you need to do. But first, at least train people. I see that in the African-American churches a lot that we're not training people. Um, we say we're called to ministry and then we're preaching and we're praying over the altar and uh, preaching. But have we really been set down to have classes to teach us how to outline a sermon? Um, the Holy Spirit gives you what to preach, what to say, but even training classes to come together as to how to outline the sermon. Or if I'm going to be a deacon in the church or deaconess, then have classes on a regular to be able to, to teach me. Let me come in front of you and learn how to pray before I go out to pray until I'm getting comfortable with the prayer. Because some people know God have called them, but they're having struggles in the reading, the writing, or something like that. So this is where we as leaders have to come in and say, you know what, we're going to set up regular classes, regular training in-house to help. You know, even like you said, with your uh, particular job, they will send you to training classes, one right behind the other, tell you time. But they're equipping you for that position. So maybe that's what we need to do when new people come and they say they want to be in a certain servant role is to train them, equip them, and make sure they're prepared before we put them out or send them out or anything like that. Anyone else has anything? Um, according to the Bible, the servant, a very common word with a variety of meanings, all implying a greater or lesser degree of inferiority and want of freedom. In, uh, in, in our churches, and I only know that because I'll just speak on our churches and what we do. We have to do better in our leadership positions. And we have to pray hard because COVID has taught us a lot about the world, us, what we don't like, what we do like, what's um, beneficial for the church, what's not. And we have to really come into serious prayer for any role that we are trying to fulfill in the church. I'm not just saying that because we're here today, it's just that um, maturity is teaching us a lot of things in life. And before we would do stuff or we would be a servant or we wanted to serve. And sometimes we did it just to be seen. I don't know about you all, but I did it sometimes just to be seen. But now as we get older in life and want to do what God has called us to do and, and do it to, um, to our ability, but unto God, we have, to, we have to follow Christ. And we have to follow what he's called us to do. And sometimes we have to look at our individual self to see how we are a hindrance to that role or a help. Is there anyone else that would like to comment? Now, I know y'all didn't come online from 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock and think I'm going to talk all night. <laughs> I wanted to share, too, sister, that um, 
um, sometimes we put, sometimes we um, hinder our own selves. We, 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 we put roadblocks up at where if, if some, we don't make it, um, well, we got to, the, the one thing that the pandemic has done is, uh, we, like you said, we've had, we've had to regroup and um, there, there are new ideas. Sometimes when others, uh, it depends, we have prejudice in the church, let me put it that way. It depends on who the idea is coming from as to whether that will be an acceptable plan or not, uh, plan of action. And that's unfortunate, but it goes back to leadership using or, or undeveloped or un, um, I'm not gonna put it, I'm not saying to leadership as though they're not leading because they are. And the commitment and being, um, if you just have a few that's, that's um, carrying the weight and the, it, it, it gets exhausting to them and it starts showing, and then it, uh, you know, it, 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 and I'm, just, I'm trying to choose my words carefully. I, lo I love our leadership. I, I appreciate their commitment because tonight I'm just looking at how many people are on. Nine people, nine participants. We didn't have to drive a car or anything. I'm not. I'm reserving judgment in this thing because I don't know what's going on in everyone's household. But I, but I do know that since the pandemic, we have gotten kind of um, relaxed in the way we, uh, and I'll, the way we serve, let me put it that way. We got a little lazy, let me put it that, to be, um, you know, we, we don't put forth the effort, we don't invite. Now I get it, sometimes we're not comfortable yet. Everyone's not comfortable with physically inviting someone to attend a worship experience. Um, that's not even a battle worth, worth fighting over. You know what I mean? Because everyone to each his own, you know, I can't tell you how you feel. And um, that's a wasted conversation because we're both children of God, but we have not gone out. How many of us have gone out and said, we got Bible study tonight? online. Tell somebody to tell somebody. Um, and we really, in this day and time that we're living in, we should be, the, the, the Zoom should be packed. But how, how it, it makes me question, I didn't tell anybody to log on tonight, not one person, to come on. Um, I, well, I just sent a text to one person said Bible study earlier. But I'm thinking that we need to regroup and re, re, recommit. Let me, all of us need to recommit because we're all leaders in some form of fashion. If you, you know, so that that's, and I don't even know what your question was because I'm like, God, <laughs> bring it up what I was feeling um, because I want to be sure the leadership understand it. Let me just say while I'm on there, I appreciate every one of our leaders. Um, and I know that it's, it's been exhausting to them. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's also exhausting to those of us who look to leadership. Um, and I'm playing in both roles because I'm in both roles. We're leaders. If you're a leader, you're, you're also a, a lay person, you know. So it's exhausting to the next person as well. And I think when we look at it that way, we, we, we both rise up, you know, to the mind of Christ. And we all go up together, you know. And I think we should put forth a greater effort. And it's more important that we reach out and still invite people. We got to get back to it. Get back to it. Amen. 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 Um, thank you for elaborating. And like you said, choosing your words, because we don't want to be judgmental or critical of anyone. But that's a good idea to invite or to make known that we're having a service. Some are going to show up and some are not or vice versa. I've been on both ends of the spectrum, showing up and not showing up, um, or deciding who's hosting or who's having it or who's going to be a part of it before I get there or before I even think about showing up. 
So I might as well be the first one to be honest with it. But I think sometimes God put me in roles now just to um, make me do better or to mature me to be better, to do better. It's just that when we see now as servants and leadership and roles that we're playing, we um, that not playing that we're in, we have to be cautious in how we lead. We lead by example and um, be a servant unto God and, and, and make disciples. And the Bible speaks and tell us to go and, and share the gospel. And are we sharing the gospel everywhere that we do go? Are we telling someone about God uh, or, or uh, being a servant to others while we're there and helping people as we come past them or as we see people on our jobs and, and you can look at them and see that really they just need a hug or they just need um, you to speak a good word to them. Sometimes we just have to set aside ourselves because we can discern and we can see and just make known, you know what, I don't know what you're going through, but you know, if you got, if you want to talk, I'm here and then just keep it moving. Do we do that? Or do we just pass them up and be like, they'll be all right. Because, you know, give people flowers now when you're gone, nobody's going to be able to just, uh, give you a flowers then. TikTok JBC at seven. Zoom in. <laughs> All right now. You said TikTok, everybody gonna be on. <laughs> it's, I it's, know we sometimes gotta use the take the devil always using uh, Christ uh, methods of, of of destroying people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We need to go on and grab some of the stuff he took from us, take it back, take it and back. recycle it and and use it to God's glory. Hashtag. If TikTok is the, is the thing they use, then let's TikTok it. You know TikTok what I mean? It. Hashtag we, it. Yeah. <laughs> so I just thought that while I was right here. That was cute. I like that. <laughs> I like that. We bring that back at our, uh, our vacation Bible school coming up. Amen. Um, um, slangs that'll help us get in. I know that's bring right. And then we, and now young people got talent and we need to use them. I can't be, we, we, we need not wait until vacation Bible school to use them, but we need to call them in now to the table. Yeah. They are, they are able, you know? Okay. All right. And, I'm done. And, I'm done. and you said a good thing. And we may need to now start training them. Yes. You know, when, when you, when you're in your career position, what you do when they bring somebody in, you start training them. That's right. So, so maybe now we need to train them in love because we're going to show it and display it. Yep. And then we're going to train them in positions. No, they're not going to do it the way you do it. No, mm -hmm. you make a cake alike. You just use the That's same right. ingredients. And what you have to use for them becoming a servant may be different. But have anybody tried to say, hey, won't you come in and uh, do you want to read the scripture today or do you want to yeah. pray today? Um, because we have to build the kingdom and we need yep. to start now with the kids and with the bringing them up. And um, That's right. I'm always reminded of my son's grandmother in DC. I used to go to church with her and she passed to the church. And I would look around and it was just her, her daughter, me and the daughter, two kids. But the kids were younger, but they were the first ones getting up to say, you know, I'm starting offering off with this amount of money. And they would get up, you know, first giving unto God. And I'm sitting there looking like, oh my God. But the grandmother preached to us four people like it was a whole church. So from there, I took, let me take this everywhere I go. Preach like yep. it's a whole church if it's just one person. That's right. So, you know, we need to now start bringing in the youth or the young people and seeing if they want to do something. Sometimes you have to just ask them, do you want to do this? Or yep. would you like to try? And you may not have to do it the same way somebody else. But by the time they finish, they're going to be comfortable in serving and saying and doing unto God the way they know how. That's right. But are we even are we even putting them up to do things? Mm. Because they zoom in on that tele on the um, you know, even when school, when they had to adapt. Mm -hmm. They 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 are very um uh uh savvy with the with the um zoom and the tech techniques and everything, but I I don't, you know, we don't we we need to rethink. Yeah. Ask them, you know, maybe they need to have a different uh uh uh, space that they go into doing the Bible studies since we're not having um, Sunday school. We got to be creative or mm -hmm. let them be creative. Ask them what it, what it is that um, will make them or, or let them lead it. Yeah. You know, but yeah, we have to be creative. We we have to, because if not, they are going to attend the church. It may yeah. be. Oh, they're busy. 
and maybe with our Carblasian family because of what they're offering. Mm -hmm. Yep. We want to stay in a traditional realm and not do things. Um, I'm not saying do different. Give the word, yeah. but you Where's know. The word? Keep, yeah, keep it real. Keep it God first. Keep the yeah. word first. But some of them are moving over to um, our non-denominational family members. Everything else. Yep. We, we got to be more inviting. Yes. No, we got to be more inviting and reach out. Yes. So in, in our servant role now, we have to see if, if our, our youth want to be a part of it. Not just on youth Sunday, third Sunday, you know, pick a speaker to come and preach and, but every Sunday that they attend. Because if, if I learn it on the in, how, in the house, how they do it, then when I go out, I won't embarrass the ministry because I've been taught sitting under my seniors who are in church with me every Sunday. So we might, you know how your kids do at home. You taught them at home, then you sent them out. So we, we may have to give them opportunities. Is there anyone else want to talk on servanthood and being a servant, your role as of a servant? What's causing you not to want to be a servant? Is God calling you to a ministry? Is he calling you to a, a certain position that you have a gift for? Come on, we have some on the phone line. I know you're listening. Um, I see sometimes you have to be a good follower to be a good servant, a mm -hmm. good leader. If you you know, some people can't follow, and and they always want to have their head riled up to be a leader. But you have to learn how to be a follower so that you can be a good leader. You can't um, lead something that you don't know nothing about. Amen. Whereas you, if you don't know how it feel to be, like I say, if, if you don't know how it feel to be a follower, then you can't really lead to me. You should be able to do exactly the same thing that I'm doing um, in the servanthood. You know, a servant, and and that means a lot. And I can under when I can follow when I can be a follower, I can understand how you feel if I'm a, I'm a leader. You see what I'm saying? I, I won't say things that going to hurt your feelings because I have already been in up that road. Come on now. I won't do things to hurt your feelings because I have already been up that road, and it and it gives you a higher respect mm -hmm. for uh, human beings, whether you're in the church or anywhere else, it gives you a higher respect if you know how to follow. Then you can be a great leader. That's where they pick, that's where you be picked up at. Amen. Just like uh, God disciples, the guys, uh, um, a lot of them, a lot of them were followers. You know, um, they were out fishing, they were following somebody, you know. Um, some were doing other things as well, but they were followers. And that's why God picked them because they were great followers, not because they were great leaders, you know. We, we don't know who's a leader, mm. but we know who's a follower. And if you can follow with a, 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 a pure heart and do what um, need to be done as a follower, when they come around to being a leader, uh, I think that would make make you much more um, valuable in the position in which you're going to be in. Mm -hmm. So I suspect sometime um, in the church, we go by a lot of tradition. You know, you, we see tradition. You can see some good, um, you can see when people are going to be good at being a leader because they you could see them in their followhood, as I would call it, even though it's no <laughs> such thing. We but, gonna use that hashtag yeah, followhood. Yeah, in their followhood, you could see them, the ones that's always saying, "Well, uh, I can do it. I I'll do it. Uh, don't worry about it. I'll try my best at it." And they learn it, and they learning to be a leader. So when it comes to being able to pick a leader, there they go right there because you're a great follower. That's all I got. Amen. Amen. 
that's awesome. I'm I'm looking at this uh, Nelson Church Leaders Manual, and when he, you said that, sir, they say a biblical leader follows the will of the Father, serves the Lord Jesus Christ first, and then lead others to follow Him. And you said a magic word. Sometimes you can pick leaders out just by seeing how they follow. And they definitely turn out to be great leaders because they've already learned how to follow. And then you have some of them that's going to go against you. If you say it's raining outside, they're going to say it's sunny. And you know, Amen. It's <laughs> you know it's raining. You have a hat on yeah. and an umbrella. Yeah. But they're going to come against the grain just to see how they can cause havoc. Yeah. Just, just to see. And you are right. Great followers make great leaders. Mm -hmm. um, I use as an example uh, when I went to lead the office in the tax office and the word was, how can I help you? I used to look at the TV show, New Amsterdam. I don't know if you all seen it or not. And there was a new uh, doctor who was over the whole hospital and he got rid of like departments of people. So I don't know what he studied prior to coming to that actual hospital and then he said now how can I help you but the people were so shocked because he had gotten rid of everybody and then he come to ask now how can I help you and he started selecting people for positions and I'm just believing he put them in positions probably because he saw before he got there who were great followers who had great records or who had done great work but yet they were the follower and not the leader. And he came in. So when uh, I went to the office to uh, be their, their leader, I said, I'm like New Amsterdam. How can I help you? And some of them were like, can we get paper? Can we get pencil? Can we get this staples? Can we get this? I said, yes, you can. Yes, you can. And they were like, how you do that? I said, I'm going to get it for you. In this case, I did have to go to Dollar Tree and purchase it because we didn't have time to you know, expense it out and get it. And then they were like, well, you did this real quick. And I was like, because I knew these were items you needed to make your job easy. So why not get you what you need to make the job easy so that they can work alongside me and show me how to lead them. And now we're a great team. Sometimes you have to listen to the team and what they're saying and then listen to the team and what they're not saying. Because their vibes, their body language, um, their tone will tell you what's not working for them. So we, we need to take all of this and when we go back in uh, to the building and become servants and things like that. And I'm going to tell you, sometimes we have to uproot people from a position. It's okay. It's okay. This role, I'm not seeing you fulfill it to your best. And, and you're holding on to it because you want that position, that title, you want that name and you want people to see your name on the program and you're not doing anything. So it's okay to revamp. That's a good word. Hashtag revamp. Anybody agree with me with revamp? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> you're the deacon and you're not showing up for church? What? Revamp. You, you, you're, the, you're the preacher and you ain't coming to nothing? Revamp. <laughs> I'm just saying. So. Are there any more questions or anything else that you want to discuss? Because we're not going to prolong this till 8 o'clock just so we can uh, be on a time that you have said we were going to be from 7 to 8. Anyone else has to say anything about servanthood? The role of a servant. Who is a servant? Scriptures to support the servant. Who are followers? Who are leaders? Are you in a role or position too long and you might be overstaying your welcome? Are you not in a position that you know you should be in? You're great with designing. You're great with programs. You're great creating stuff but you're not doing it. You don't want to do it, but you feel a tug in your spirit. You should be doing it. You feel a tug. You want to do it. Or do you want to learn how to do it? Some of the positions, do you want to learn how to do it? Mm -hmm. 
you know, you may not be the world's best cook, but maybe you want to learn how to make a cake. So make it practice at home. And then once the family eat in there better, okay, then you can bring the right one to church. Some people may want to be seamstress. Show me how. You know, we have a lot of gifts and talents in the church. And mm -hmm. a lot of times we won't even use them. We won't tell them about it. We have them. We won't do them. Uh, when my dad died, <laughs> the pastor actually said the family could do everything. And he did not lie because we had gifts amongst my siblings. And he was like, I think they've done everything and can do everything except be the mortician. I was like, now, if we go to school and study, we might just could do that. I know that's right. <laughs> but I didn't think that was any of our desire, but we put our gifts and talents to work to make it work. So collectively, all of us put our talents together. So that's what we have to do in ministry to make it work. Put our talents and gifts together and not make it feel like, you know, I'm just doing this is what I do, but it's not what I feel or who I am. Well, I'm just doing this role because somebody got to fill it. No, I'm not doing that. I'm sorry. I ain't doing nothing just to fill it. I'm going to sit down. So is there any questions? Any, anybody have anything about being a follower? Where well, the Great Commission said, go and make disciples. And first we invite them to the Bible study if they're not showing up or let them know that we're having something or invite them to meetings that we're having, ministries that we're having and programs that we're having. Send our little notes. Hi, ah, this is what's going on. Create the Facebook page. Hey, we have a service this Sunday. Put it out there. Amen. Amen, Reverend Lewis. I, I didn't want to come on because I'm still driving. But thank you for your time and thank you for your teaching uh, and your push to have conversation because that makes the teaching better that, you know, you hear things in teaching that you won't normally hear if people don't speak up. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. May God bless you. And anybody else that got questions, I'm going to get offline so y'all ain't here in my car. <laughs> you all right. Thank you so much. You be safe out there while you're driving. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Lewis. You want to lead us out in word, word of prayer? Amen. Thank Amen. you also. Good, you lesson. Good, good lesson. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad you all were able to receive something because being a servant is important. And mm -hmm. everywhere we go, we ought to be servants. And some days we don't feel like a servant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just be honest. I don't, I don't feel like that today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in that case, I'm going to pray hard and I'm going to stay at home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because my servanthood is not showing up. Uh -huh. So we have to be true to ourselves mm -hmm. before we can be true to others. You know, if no is no, if I'm not feeling good, I'm not feeling this, I need to stay at home, get myself together. Mm -hmm. This Sunday, I cannot preach because I need to be preached to. Amen. So Amen. We have, yeah, we have to be honest. And then we, when we give our best self, we will give our best. Uh -huh. So, Father, right now, I come before you, God. I just thank you for everything that we have spoke on today. The greatest among you are those who serve. So we thank you, God, that you've allowed us to see ourselves as a servant, or even yeah. us, if we had to rethink what we were doing in our positions, Father, that we will bring back the joy, the peace, or even if we need to remove ourselves from the position so that someone <laughs> else can take it, Father. We thank you right now that we have gotten revelation as to what it requires to be a servant. We thank you for the scriptures to support being a servant in the role of a servant. Father, we bless you right now for Jerusalem. Bless Asking God that you cover them right now, Father, in the work that they continue to do. Father, we thank you for unity in the place. We thank you for unity within this church family, Father God. And we thank you for those who lead the church while they are without a shepherd. Father, we ask that you continue to allow them to make right decisions, Father, that will help support the full body, Father. We thank you and yeah. praise you that every limb come together to work together, that they need each other. And those, Father, that's working in the vineyard, that's attached to Jerusalem, who are out doing mission work, Father, we pray that you continue to keep them strong, 
to Jesus. show them in the work that they're doing. And we thank you, God, that they even follow the great command and to go out, Father God. So we thank you that even where their feet tread, Father, they're giving a word of God to whoever they are surrounded by. And we pray yes. peace over them right now in the name of Jesus, over their minds. And we protect them from COVID right now, Father God. Anything that try to rise up, Father, we even pray that they even drink in more water, Father God, liquids, hydrate drape the body and the mind, Father God. And even when they put their hands to work, let them realize, Father God, that you bless the work of their hand and whatever they're doing in the mission field. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray, God. I thank you even for another opportunity that you taught me as a preacher, Father God, by this Bible study. We thank and praise you for it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Bless you all. Thank you so much. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Hey, young man. Hey, hey, baby. hey little baby. Hey, <laughs> Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night.